Hi everyone, today we are getting prepared for Christmas. I know it's the C word, um, but uh, we want to make a Christmas cake that will be its best by the big day um, because we're going to make it now and then it allows us time to feed it. If you've not done a workshop with Boozy Bakers before, uh, I hope you enjoy this. Mr Boozy Baker is as always behind the camera taking your shout outs and your questions. Um, so <laughs> I was reading some of the comments about no, not Christmas, it's still September. I know, it's just I like a really nice, fruity, mature Christmas cake and the best way to do that is to start about 12 weeks uh, before the festive uh, season and uh, yeah, get cracking on the Christmas cake. Plus, with this new rule of six, or lockdown in some areas if you're that unlucky, uh, it's good to have something to look forward to. Right, I'm going to make a start. Um, so with Christmas cakes, it's, uh, it's a really special cake um, and it takes a long time to bake. So there's a warning here now, if you're about to go out anywhere, if it's a short time, you can leave it uncooked and put it in later, but it's going to take around or up to four hours to bake on a very low temperature. So uh, to protect the cake, we need to prepare the tin. So I've actually not done anything without you. Well, not much at all, really. So I'm using an eight inch tin today. I have put in the discussion um, the ingredient quantities. So if you're following that, just remember you're using the lower quantities. But an eight inch round tin, you can use square if you prefer. Um, but we need to really line this so that the fruit cake inside is really protected. We don't want any burnt bits. Um, we've got Lorraine on saying hi. She says no one in her household likes Christmas cake, but she does remember as a kid her mum baking a Christmas cake every year, and she wanted to do this and show her. Ah. Thank you for making this possible. Oh, you're very welcome. And we've got Bev saying hi from New Zealand. Oh, hi from New Zealand. Excellent. <laughs> we do love when we, I mean, we love everyone joining us, don't get me wrong, but it's really exciting to see how far we're reaching. Uh, so, uh, in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, but lovely of you to join us. Right, so I'm going to get a little bit of butter on a pastry brush. If you don't have a pastry brush, um, you can use a bit of kitchen towel or something. Um, and I'm just going to brush it along my um, tin. So if you've already prepared your tin, um, that's fine. Uh, but I'm just going to show you because this is a, just a little bit different to our usual um, pre preparation. A bit more involved. So I'll put that there. It's not, it's not caked. It's just li lightly greased. Um, and then what I'm going to do, it is a little blue Peter here, um, but I'm going to cut out a circle of parchment paper. I've already done the cutting out on mine, but I've actually made it double. So it's two lots of parchment paper sitting in the bottom. So double thickness of parchment paper. Now I appreciate that you may need to cut that out. Um, so parchment in the bottom, show you that, there we go, and then I've got a big strip of parchment paper and I've folded it in half and this is to go around the inside. Now I want to make sure that we have no gaps of metal, so this is what I tend to do. Along one edge, I'm just going to fold it over about one and a half centimetres. So I've got my long line uh, as I've, so I've, I'll go again. I've got my parchment paper. I folded it over. It's going to stick up above my tin. It doesn't have to be that tall, it can be shorter, but it's not a problem if it's taller because it just all helps avoid the top from going like um, uh, browned, over browned. And then on the edge, all I've done is fold over a little bit. I'm hoping they can see this, Mr. Boozy Baker. Just a little yeah. fold. And I'm going to cut along that and make like a fringe. And what this does, just giving myself some space, is it helps um, to curve it round the tin 
um, without having heavy joints. So I'm just snipping about every centimetre along with a pair of scissors. I didn't put scissors on the equipment list, so if you're cursing me right now, I do understand. Uh, Maureen says that uh, they're back on local lockdown, so the time of this is great, getting ahead. Yeah, you know what, I did think um, it, it's quite nice to have something to look forward to when it's a bit of a, it's just a bit of a pain, isn't it, with all the lockdown bits. I do understand it. So we do want to keep you cheerful. We want you to have something to do. Um, I will put one on for next week, uh, next week's workshop. Um, it has just got quite busy, so I'm just a little, I'm more ahead on YouTube, um, putting them onto YouTube, but uh, a little bit behind on thinking of what to do next. So I'll get there. So along, you'll see I've got a bit of a fringed, area there nice strip there and all I'm going to do I might just use a bit more butter actually just on the edges of my parchment paper just so it has something to stick onto so just going along the edges of the circular bit of parchment paper you'll be so glad of all this preparation when the cake's in and then I'm going to press my parchment paper strip up against the sides of the tin which we greased earlier and to the base which I've just lightly brushed now and I'm just going to make sure it's nicely fanned out so we don't end up with any weird angles on our cake but that is that is the overall look you're going for Matt is liking your idea with the cutting you could do that with all their fruit cakes yeah yeah it really does um help just make sure that nothing seeps out and it's all nicely protected and you don't end up with like more of a hexagonal shape uh, with your paper so that is what you're looking for um, and then what I'm going to do is sit the tin onto I've got my baking tray and then I've just got a wad I haven't measured this out there's probably several pieces but just a wad of newspaper and I'm going to sit that in the tray on the tray rather and then I'm going to put my tin on top of that it's so much to do on this bit I know there is but we're going to get to the cooking bit soon I promise not quite finished I'm afraid then if you just get a couple of sheets I'm probably advertising someone here Newspapers are available. <laughs> Other newspapers are definitely available. Uh, bear with me. So, this is the bit I didn't do earlier. You can see why I did some of the cutting before. <laughs> right. So, that's just a doubled up piece. Like that. Folded as it normally is. And then I'm going to fold it again. Uh, Sophie's asked, why do you do that with the newspaper? Um, it is to protect the tin. So we don't want it to... Um, uh, it protects the fruit from burning. The more you surround it uh, with the newspaper underneath and around, um, it just um, protects it from overcooking on the edges where the metal is um, and, and we just don't want it to dry out so I'm going to go with the natural um, curve Alison's asked who she uses so cake kits in uh, yes you can yeah uh, you might struggle to wrap things around it but try and you should be all right in a silicon a bit more to be fair because it hasn't got that metal to overcook it already but if you can add any protection to it, just because it's a longer bake time, then do. Um, Go on. Be Becky's asked what if I had no newspaper, which uh, Paul has kindly said we'll buy one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have no newspaper, you could try brown paper um, uh, or some more parchment paper on the outside. Um, this is all, I mean, don't get me wrong, you could probably, but, well, you can bake a fruitcake uh, without all of this, but if you want it to be nice and moist, 
um, I would highly suggest um, making all this effort. I know it looks silly, uh, but it does make a difference. Uh, it's a few things we've used on paper. Yeah, that's no problem. Whatever you've got to hand. Now, this is the bit I struggle with, and I'm going to look silly doing this, but I want to... I might just use a paper clip just for a minute, just so that I haven't got another pair of hands on me. I just want to... I've got to wrap two round at the same time because it won't go... One sheet of newspaper won't go all the way round. You could use a bit of sellotape, I suppose. Um, and then... Could you use a baking belt? Yes, absolutely. So a baking belt is... Oh, yeah, that's another idea. A baking belt is like tea towels, uh, which you could also use. You could use some damp tea towels and put those around the outside. Uh, so absolutely, if you've got a baking belt, Mr. Bake, Boozy Baker's Christmas present ideas, uh, you can use that. Right, I'm just getting my string and I'm going to wrap it round the centre of my tin. It'll all come together in a minute, promise. And I'm just going to knot it. I would do this as you could see, but I'm a bit hack handed for that. But you should be able to see it in a minute. Look a bit tighter. It doesn't matter how pretty the newspaper looks like. We're not eating that. It is just to protect it. And I'm just going to knot that so it can't go anywhere. So Edwina's used the same piece of brown paper for quite a few years. Just fold it up. Oh, it well done. So, nice eco tip. Yeah. There we go. And I'll do it this side so you can see me doing it again. I'm just going to tighten that. There we go. I'm going to cut off the ends just to be neat. And I can take my paper clip off now. I don't need that. Right, that is my tin. Rather high, so if you don't have the oven space for that, just cut it lower. That's not a problem. Um, but uh, that is going to protect my cake. Right, I'm going to put uh, what looks like some kind of kids' home ec project uh, over to the side. Um, and we'll get on with the Christmas cake. Right, so I've got two bowls today. I've gone for a rather ginormous one just because um, it's easier to stir in without it going over the edges. If you don't have that size, don't worry. Uh, right, I did say I was going to give you the times for your preheating your oven. Um, so you will want 150 degrees for conventional, 140 degrees for a fan oven, or gas mark two. Right, so yeah, as I was saying, I've got two bowls, one slightly bigger for my whole mix, doesn't need to be this big, but it's really easy to stir things in. So I'd get your biggest bowl ready for later. In the meantime, uh, we're going to uh, put all the fruit together. Um, so I'm hoping I can, everyone's ready to get, crack on. I've got 150 grams of um, glass, is it glass, glass? Nice. Glace cherries. I want to say glacier and it's wrong. Uh, glace cherries. Um, now, I have washed these of some of the sugar syrup. So if you have particularly sticky uh, glazed cherries, you could just rinse them in the bowl and just um, dry them, pat them dry with a tea towel. Um, but if you really like the syrup, just leave it in. So it's 150 of glazed cherries. Ideas for a large bowl. Uh, Rose says get a bucket. <laughs> and Maureen says I've used a washing up bowl in the past for a 12 inch cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've got the glazed cherries. I've got 425 grams of sultanas. I know some recipes call for soaking the fruit overnight. Um, I don't do that with this one. Um, we're going to add the brandy later and soak it up and then we're going to feed it before Christmas. Uh, so this recipe, uh, I don't soak the, the fruit. Um, and 500 grams of mixed fruit. Now I did see a few comments saying that people are going to use cranberries and other things. No problem at all. Whatever you like, um, keep the uh, quantities, uh, the measures the same, but if you want to use cranberries, if you want to add dates, 
Um, or if you want more orangey flavor, you could put some orange zest in. Um, and if you want to add nuts, that's no problem. Um, but that's the kind of measures that you would like in this. How do you think like the cherries need to be chopped? Uh, oh, good question. So mine were halved. Uh, so if you have whole cherries, um, then you may like to chop them in half. Um, depends how you like your cake, really. If, I, I like to have chunks of cherries. And also, in our family, most people don't like cherries, uh, which makes me incredibly selfish. I do appreciate that. But if I keep them big, they can pick them out. So, um, so however you would like. I'll give you a minute to uh, just tip those in or weigh something out. All I'm doing is I'm just going to mix those together. There's nothing else in there. It's just the dried fruit. So thank you. You're very welcome. Right. Once you've got your bowl of mixed fruit, we're going to add um, the flour to it. Mary's saying you're going to have to be careful which glass you pick up. I, I know, I know, I thought this. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> when my speech starts to slow, you know I've gone for the wrong one. Um, so uh, I'm using 300 grams of plain flour. Um, now, I can't recall, because I'm like that, whether I said to use a sieve or not. It's not an absolute must. So if you haven't got a sieve, don't worry. If you have, by all means, use it. Um... But if you add your flour to the fruit, there is a reason um, that we do it this way. And that is um, the flour um, will coat all the fruits when we've mixed it together. Um, and then it will stop the fruit from sticking together in a wet mix. So let's keep pushing things away. Um, and since we're adding a dry ingredient, we're also going to add uh, two teaspoons of ground mixed spice. Am I going too fast, guys? Yeah, lots of people saying, no, you're not going too fast. Phew! <laughs> And do you need to keep some flour to help with the adding of the eggs? Ah, so uh, yes, I am a bit lazy. I tend to just put it in from this bowl. Um, so for anyone querying what that's about, um, when we add the rest of the ingredients in a separate bowl, um, sometimes when you add all the eggs at once, they can curdle. Um, so the trick is, and we did, we addressed this can't remember what recipe we did recently. Lemon drizzle, we addressed this. Um, if you ever have a recipe that your eggs curdle a bit when you mix them together, you add a little bit of flour um, and it just brings it back together again. So we'll be adding it, but we'll just add it from this. So um, don't worry about that at the moment. So I'll show you what I've done without tipping it out at you, hopefully. I have coated all the dried fruit in the flour and that just helps uh, when we're making up the rest of the batter and we add it together. You don't get clumps of fruit all hanging around together and it stops it from all sinking to the bottom and the batter to the top. It's more of a problem when you're doing a sponge cake rather than a dense fruit cake, but it's a really good tip. So I'm just going to pop that in front of me, um, which will give me the space for my extra large bowl there but please don't worry if you don't have this just the biggest bowl you have will be fine right sip sip okay we're going to do the uh wetter ingredients so i'm going to use um 275 grams of softened butter you can use margarine if you prefer if you have just got butter out the fridge, I would highly recommend um, warming it up in the microwave for a few seconds because you're going to need to stir this into your sugar. Um, so that's why we go for softened. Uh, Rhoda said, do you mean mixed spice, not all spice? Mix, you... Mixed spice, yeah. We, we've used mixed spice. And Eleanor says, can we use gluten-free flour? Um, yeah, you should be able to do that. That shouldn't be a problem. I can't say I've tried it, but um, we use we use gluten free for uh, various um, 
sponge cakes and you're not heavily reliant on the flour on this you've got a lot of eggs going in to combine it so yeah go for it um, so that was 275 grams of softened butter um, and to that I'm going to add two different types of sugar I've gone for um, a caster and a brown sugar we've got a question haven't we yeah couple uh, on the butter salted or unsalted I always go for uh, unsalted if you've got salted don't worry about it, you can use it. Just don't add any extra salt. Although, I don't think I've actually said to put any salt in this anyway. But if that's all you have, you will be fine to use it. In case I think someone is stopping your glass off me. <laughs> Change the oops topping. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should. <laughs> um, so I'm using 150 grams of caster sugar and 125 grams of brown sugar. Um, if you only have white sugar, you can just use all castor. That's not a problem. Um, you, okay, it is toughing it up now. Thanks for that. Um, it may not be a good idea. <laughs> um, you could use all brown, uh, but I like the mix because white sugar brings um, a cake together and brown sugar adds moisture. Um, so it's 150 grams of caster sugar I'm using and uh, 125 grams of brown. I've just got a bit of the caster sugar stuck in there. There we go. How are we doing guys? Everyone keeping up? Um, so. All I'm going to do now is mix the butter and the sugar together until the you can't see the sugar. It's all it's all combined. Yeah, Lynn said she made the chocolate uh, cookies with orange zest last week. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, that's a really good addition. Elle's watching today, but she's baking tomorrow for shopping. Hasn't been ready yet. Ah, uh, no problem. <laughs> right. I'm just going to give that a bit of a beat up uh, with my spoon and just... Can you whisk the butter and sugar with an electric mixer? Yeah, you could. Right, so I'll show you what I've done, but that is nice and creamed. Um, and to that, we're going to add five eggs. Now, they are medium eggs. If you're using larger or smaller, to be honest, you probably won't need to add less or more eggs. If they're smaller, you could always add like um, a small amount, like a teaspoon or something of, of milk, um, but I wouldn't worry too much. So you're all making Mr. Busy Baker smile. Whatever he's reading, he's smiling a lot. I think we're about to get some offers for the kitchen. <laughs> Private <laughs> message us. <laughs> all right, one, two. I'm gonna do three of the eggs mix them and then if it starts to curdle which if you've not seen that before you'll see what I mean and then I can add a little bit of my flour from our fruit so I'm just mixing in those three eggs to my butter and sugar Usually using her and her cousins are usually using their granny's recipe, so she'll oh. try yours. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't want to mess with granny's recipe, I've got to say. Right, um, what I'm going to do, um, it's ever so slightly curdled, not much, but you can just kind of see the mixtures, just kind of some parts are lumpier, some more are liquid, and we call that curdling. Um, so, what I'm going to do is just add um, a spoonful. Yes, it's got fruit in as well, but that doesn't bother me. So I'm just going to add um, a couple of tablespoons of my uh, fruit flour mix. I've still got a hair in my mouth. I don't know. There, I think I've got it. Oh, you're telling me off for not having my hair up, aren't you, Mr. Beasley Baker? I know, naughty me. I do, I promise, I do have my hair up when I'm baking professionally. But when I'm sitting with a glass of Prosecco, it just, yeah, I just don't. Right. 
Okay, that's um, brought it a bit together. You can see a smoother mix in the bowl. Um, so I'm going to add the last two eggs. So that's five eggs in total. Vicky's loving this, watching now, and we'll replay later. Lovely. Yeah, we aim to make baking fun and relaxing. It shouldn't be uh, stressful. That's not the point of baking. Right. So I'm just going to mix those two eggs in. There we go. And then, once your mixture, I'm just worried I'm going to lose my spoon there. Once your mixture of, so that's the 275 grams of butter, 150 grams of caster sugar, and 125 grams of brown sugar. And then we added five eggs to that mix. Stirred it all in. Um, and now we are going to add our fruit and flour mix to that. This is saying that's a lot of eggs. Yeah, it is. Um, so I'm going to fold this ever so slightly. So I'll try and do it so the camera can see. Does that work? Yeah. Now, here's where you have a choice. If you want a light fruit cake, then you can leave it as it is. If you want a darker fruit cake, then you can add a little bit of black treacle. Have we got an Erin? Does Erin want to come and say hello? They can't see you from over there. You'll have to come join me. You're saying hello. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah. We're making fruit cake. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, you're stirring, are you? Well, you really yeah. probably should have your hair tied up because it's very, very long. Is that good? Yeah. Right, I'm going to add some black treacle next. So. Uh, this asks, do you sell the cakes that you bake? Yes, we do. Um, so we make, if you have a look on our Facebook page or our website, um, I'll give you that. It's www.boozybakers.co.uk. Um, you can see a wide range of our cakes. Um, we make boozy and non-boozy. Um, we make novelty and just um, just pretty decorations. Um, yeah, we've got we've got loads that we do. So I'm going to add a really good size um, tablespoon of black treacle, and that just darkens. Uh, the mix. So scrape that down. There we go. Right, so I'm going to just mix that in and then we are done. That is your um, Christmas cake mix. It's as easy as that. I think we spent more time preparing the tin than we probably did on the uh, actual cake. Um, so I haven't forgotten the brandy, don't worry. Um, the brandy I'm actually going to use uh, once it's cooked. So I will explain what I do next. Um, but for now, let's get this cake into the tin. Uh, Rose says the uh, black treacle looks a bit like tar. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and, um, and Sharon said, don't usually eat Christmas cake in our house. I've loved all your other workshops, so given this was going Oh, together. brilliant. I think what we'll do towards Christmas <laughs> is uh, we might do some Christmas decorations for the top of the cake as well. Right, I'm just going to drop this into, you can see it's nice and dense. I'm going to drop this into my tin. I'm just going for the centre of it so it doesn't spill on the sides. Uh, All I'm doing now um, is I'm just um, spreading the mix out evenly in the tin. Right, so all I've done um, is just evened that mixture out so it's nice and flat across my cake tin. Um, what we will do now is uh, put these in the oven. Um, it does take up to four hours. 
uh, to cook. I do find fruit cakes a little bit harder to tell if they've cooked through because unlike a sponge cake, they don't have the same springiness. Um, but uh, this is tried and tested with me several times. Um, so put it in the oven. After a couple of hours, check on it. If the top is browning, get a little bit of parchment paper, just a square of it, and just press it lightly onto the top so that it just covers it up. You know, like when you cook a ham in the oven or something and you don't want it to brown all that time. Same thing, we're just going to cover it for the latter part to stop those um, sultanas on the top uh, becoming burnt bullets. So um, give it a couple of hours and then um, put a bit of parchment over the top. Just press it lightly in. It doesn't need to stick to it or anything. Just press it in um, and give it another couple of hours. By all means, check it at about three and a half. Um, you can do the skewer trick of pulling, putting it in, pulling it out. Um, if you don't get any wet mix, it's done. Um, but four hours uh, is, tends to be the time. We use a fan oven and that tends to be good enough for us. Um, once it is out the oven, um, you need to get a skewer or um, equivalent kebab stick and poke holes all in the top, lots and lots of them. And then we've got nine tablespoons of brandy. Now, you don't have to use all of that. You could use half of that um, and brush it on or spoon it on. And then you need to leave your fruit cake to cool, completely cool down in the tin. Um, and then if you want to do extra, you can get a plate, um, put some brandy on a plate and sit your cake upside down so the brandy can suck up through the hole but once it's cool you will want to store it then for Christmas. My personal method is to use some parchment and I wrap it up a bit like a Christmas present um, and then you can either use some cling film or some foil just to keep it tightly wrapped um, and then you can store it in a cool dry place. Now I would recommend once a month um, bring it out and add a little bit more brandy to it let it soak it up and then wrap it up again and bring it out the next month. I know some of you may do this on a weekly basis. Personally, I will forget. I will forget to do it that regularly and I find that the, the three or four feeds is enough. Um, Lucy's asked, how much brandy do you add to feed each month? Um, I would say a good couple, two to three tablespoons. And then we will come back later in the year to do a, a Christmas cake decorating workshop uh, where we will cover in marzipan uh, and fondant um, and do some Christmas decorations. Uh, so uh, whether we have lockdown again or not, we will keep on doing these workshops. We're here to provide you a bit of light relief um, and some tasty treats at the end of it. And we also have a recipe book. It doesn't include every single workshop because we have done many, many more workshops since we released the recipe book. Uh, we are looking to put another recipe book together. But if you would like the book, you can find Lockdown Baking with Boozy Bakers on Amazon. I do hope you've really enjoyed today. Uh, we have so many more on uh, YouTube, so go, do go check out. We've got scones, cookies, carrot cake, lemon meringue pie, cinnamon buns, bread, pizza. There's masses. There's absolutely masses on there. And Leslie's saying thank you. Just found the perfect recipe for my daughter to make her first Christmas oh, cake. Oh, lovely. I'm really pleased. Uh, if we do do another book, the Christmas cake will be in there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I will, I'll get cracking on that. Uh, so that's it from us today, guys. Enjoy your Christmas cake. Enjoy the smell of your fruitcake cooking uh, this afternoon. Go grab a cup of tea. You've earned it. And I will see you again next week. Thanks.